Scusate, prima di chiudere io però vorrei sentire anche il compositore e i produttori. Al compositore vorrei chiedere come ha lavorato con un regista sulle immagini, se c'è stata un'influenza, eh, vi siete influenzati a vicenda, se eh, lei è intervenuto a film concluso, insomma, come, come avete interagito con, uh, con i registi? Well, um... I will answer you, but I think I will, uh, I will answer you in a different way because I was thinking this thing that I think will answer you now. It's, I feel we all are like... I was realizing now that this movie is a little bit like an antenna. I don't know if that's... I'm sorry about the translator. Antenna. Antenna. It's like we are... Uh, Paul was getting this influence in the, in the script. He was... Um, giving uh, Nomi these ideas to work and, and uh, Christoph also to work about, but it's like, I was thinking about Tosca and Madame Bovary and I was thinking about the others, I was thinking about the orphanage, I was thinking about this idea of woman and love and everything, and I, I'm, I was realizing that this movie, I mean, we are the creators of this movie, but in a way we are just taking this, this very big uh, force, strength, that is just we are just creating something with it, but in a way it was given to us. I don't know if Paul would agree with me. I don't know if he would be happy that I'm telling him that it's not his movie or, or, or not me, but in a way I feel we are just taking his strength. And um, there's a funny story that I actually watched the movie in origin without subtitles. And I'm Spanish, so my origin is quite bad, actually. I, I just, but I perfectly understood the movie without knowing what they were saying. I really understood, and it's about the acting, really. I mean, uh, Christoph is playing such a great... Uh, it's, I, I was so in love with him. I mean, I was, I was like, ah, it, it's me, it's me, and I wish um, I would meet Anna so I could love her, and, and I, could protect, I could protect her from everything that is happening to, to her, and all these dangers, and I wish I could love her her child also, even though it's not mine. And I, I really, uh, and so it's funny that I got this, and I understood everything without any, uh, any subtitle. And then um, I think uh, we, should this, but, uh, we should ask the producers and we should ask Paul, but I think they wanted me to, um, in a way, warm up the movie a little bit, because I think it was very intelligent for them to think that something a little emotional, not much, it's not a melodrama, but something that a little emotional would, would make the movie even more powerful than it was. So actually, the best direction that I got from Paul was the very movie, and it was the acting, which is so impressive that I didn't have to understand what they were but saying. It's, a, it's amazing for me, it's like you give me another dimension, because I don't really talk in the movie that much. And with your work, it's like you add something that is going on inside of me, but we never met. We met today. Yeah. But when I saw your work, it was like you actually were putting subtitles <laughs> the other around, yeah. for what's going on in me. Yeah, but it was already there, and, and it's actually, you know, the composers, we are so lucky. When we, this movie was such a gift for me, because I got something that was incredible and powerful, and it, it's just like powder, it's powder, levadura in Spanish, like what you put to breath, and then it just gets really big. So all, all, all we needed in this movie were some themes and just warming it, warming it up a bit, and then the movie just would... Um, I'm so in love with the movie, but I realize now that, uh, that Paul and, and Naomi and Crystal were talking about it, that we are just an antenna of this idea of, of, of mother that is... Um, in a way, the movie is a little similar to the orphanage because you have this fighting woman, but it has nothing to do with it. And I'm glad that I didn't have to do the orphanage again because it, it was already done. So I did completely different music, and I, of course, I was very attracted by the um, Scandinavian whatever. Although I, I have never been in Denmark and in. in Norwegian, I've only been in Denmark, and I don't think Denmark, uh, sorry, I don't think uh, Norway is as you put it in the movie. But I really liked it so much. I don't know if, if, if I answered you, but this is my feelings. Thank you.
Eh, per concludere invece ai produttori, dai produttori volevo sapere qual è la sfida, ricollegandomi tra l'altro a una domanda precedente, qual è la sfida più interessante nel produrre un film diciamo, riconducibile a un genere però chiaramente d'autore? Well, um, I'm lucky because this is the third film I produced for Paul and we are partners, we are, we are working very close together and I read all his scripts and produced um, all but his first film. Uh, film so, uh, in a way, first time I met Paul, it was in 1992 or something, and I was, he had only done a short film, a 30-40 minute short film, and I, didn't, I had never met him, and I was sitting in the, in the theater, and I saw an amazing uh, film called The Bingo Joint, and it was with reality and dreams and everything, it was like a fairy tale in a way. And uh, I just went out of the cinema and I said, could someone point out this guy for me because this is talking to my fairy tale side. Um, and I think that is a very good thing with Paul's film because they always have different dimensions. And this is why it's also very interesting to see how you work with when you try to find the money for the film and when you do the casting together with the, with the, the director and also find Fernando and the co-producers and everything. They have to be in a way in the same kind of world as you are. You would like to do something as a producer that is, is different, that talks to you. I cannot produce any film because it's such a hard work to get all the money. <laughs> so I need to kind of understand. I also, I also need to understand what I don't understand. And it's about the question that you have over there, that if there are any, any things in the script or in the film that is not logical, uh, has a logical explanation, I can live with, it, with that. If I think it, the, the film as a whole is, uh, is something that works for me, because, because I'm, in a way, as a producer, I'm a sales person. I need to get the money, I need to sell the script, and then find out how we can do it. And I was lucky because I, I have two co-producers, Anna Kornelman from Sweden, she's not here today, and then I, had, I was lucky to get uh, Karl Baumgartner from Pandora Film in Germany. And uh, in a way it was very easy to get the money for this film, because we had great talent, we had a great script, and we were, I think we were thinking in the same direction, and that's really, really, really important, I think. I just want to say, for me, besides the beauty of the script and the, and the people who was attached to Paul, know me, uh, do it, you know, uh, for me it was very interesting to make something which was crossing over in a way, that the, the stronger elements which are in the movie, uh, very interesting because I think uh, the movies what I'm producing, I always try to produce them also for the audience. You never know how big is the audience which you achieve at the end. You know, it can be small or wide, but uh, these uh, elements uh, are helping also to come to come uh, closer to the audience. You know, that was very one of the important uh, motives for me to enter the production. And I just want to add that, uh, that uh, when talking about the fairy tale thing, I also think that film should be emotional, in one way or the other. And even if you make it religious.